Hello, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh goodness. Oh, okay. Here we go. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. It's me. It's Emily from Bitter Pill. Um. Yeah, I'm really pumped to uh, go live for a whole hour. Hopefully I'll have enough stuff to talk about. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, looks like there's a few peeps here. How's it going, y'all? I've never done this before. The Facebook Live thing is nuts. It's, it's very weird. Um, I don't know if I can like look and see who's watching me here. It's crazy. The internet is so weird. It freaks me out. Um, well, it's storming here in Massachusetts. I'm drinking my tea. And I'm trying to decide if I should play a song first or I uh, have like a little thing to read for you guys from one of my favorite books. Um, I'll just do the song. I'm already holding the guitar. I'll do the song first. Here we go. What's up? If you have anything um, you want to talk about, you want to hear me talk about, if you want to say something about the album or me, I looked. Also, I checked out the demographic that that uh, we have is, uh, or this specific event was men from 25 to 34. So hello, men from ages 25 to 34. It's great to have you with me, and it doesn't feel weird at all that that's the only type of people who want to watch my life. I. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is a song that we, uh, used to do a lot. We don't really do it at all anymore. Uh, we used to open every Titus show with this song, and, uh, we've done it a bunch of different ways. Um, there's actually a great version of this by Doc Watson, who was kind of, like, who I based my own version of this on. Uh, it's called Am I Born to Die, and I'm, I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's really long, but um, I figured this would be a, a great little thing to bring back. We've done a uh, reggae version, and a super slow version, and a fast version, and just an accordion version, and all this stuff. It's on our first album, um, so here we go.
nice and depressing to start things off. Start the day off sad, that's what I always say. Um, where am I gonna put this guitar now? I'm gonna put it right over here, right next to me. Um, so yeah, welcome to my live. I'm drinking some tea that I made earlier today. It's got uh, lavender and rosemary and peppermint that I all grew in my garden. Also, I put one blackberry from our blackberry bush. Mmm. Oh, it's splendid. Um, so yeah, I think next off, I'm gonna take this shot here that I poured myself. Oh yeah. Just wipe my face on my knee. It's fine. I got most of it in my mouth. So, how's everybody been doing? Whew. Um, like I said, this is a chat. If you have a question for me, if you have a judgment, please send it my way. I love it both. I love it all. Wow, I'm already drunk. I took one shot. Um, so now I'm going to read from this book. This is my favorite book. It's called The Fifth Child. See if you guys, Doris Lessing, fifth child. Uh, I read this in high school. I actually, funny story about this book, but um, I almost didn't get to graduate because the librarians were saying that I stole this book. And I was so adamant that I had returned it. I ended up having my mom show up to the school and pretty much threaten them to they didn't sign my special graduation paper, things were going to happen and not turn out well. Um, turns out that I had the book the whole time, and there's the library sticker right there. So, <laughs> but you know what? Those librarians were bitches. Um, but the, so this book is fucked up. Real fucked up tale about this boring, uh, you know, normie husband and wife and they always plan to have seven kids something like i can't remember the exact number of kids but they had always dreamed of having this big family big huge house have big parties and host all these fancy christmases and and what have you um so harriet she has four beautiful angel children and they're just so well behaved and so good and they could never hurt a fly or do anything wrong. But then, she has the fifth child. Ooh, fifth child named Ben. He, well, I can uh, describe him a little bit for you. And uh, this is one of the books that scared me into never having a kid. And I still firmly stand by that. Sorry parents, you're getting dogs as grandchildren. Um, so here we go. This is, um, from The Fifth Child by Doris Lessing. <clears throat> he was not a pretty baby. He did not look like a baby at all. He had a heavy shouldered hunched look, as if he were crouching there as he lay. His forehead sloped from his eyebrows to his crown. His hair grew in an unusual pattern from the double crown where it started a wedge or triangle that came low on the forehead. The hair was lying forward in a thick, yellowish stubble, while the side and back hair grew downwards. His hands were thick and heavy, with pads of muscle in the palms. He opened his eyes and looked straight up into his mother's face. <clears throat> they were focused, greeny, yellow eyes like lumps of soapstone. She had been waiting to exchange looks with the creature who, she had been sure, had been trying to hurt her. But there was no recognition there and her heart contracted with pity for him. Poor little beast, his mother disliking him so much. But she heard herself say nervously, though she tried to laugh, he's like a troll or a goblin or something. And she cuddled him to make up, but he was stiff and heavy. He was not crying. Harriet held him out, challenging the nurse with her eyes to take him. The nurse, mouth tight with disapproval, took the baby and he was put unprotesting in his cot. 
He had not cried since he was born, except for a first roar of protest, or perhaps surprise. And that's why I don't want to risk having an alien troll baby, okay? <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that book is, from start to finish, is really hard to put down. I, first time I read it in high school, I was like, holy shit. I just reread it um, not too long ago, and, and I think I read it in two days because I just couldn't stop reading it. It's a short book. It's a really short read. It's, it's thin. But, wow, what a tale. I don't want to give anything else away, but it only gets worse from there. Like, so much worse. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, that's a really good book to check out. I would love to get it, like, see it be made into a movie. That would be amazing. Um, but we'll see about that. Because pandemic. Um, so, let's see. I got a question here. Um... Wondering when better bitter pill is gonna play Rochester. Ooh. I don't know. I mean we have only been offered a couple shows. See right now pandemic has really um fucked up live music and art and pretty much if you're like a working artist and any aspect of that arena, whether it's, you know, having a gallery or playing in a band or doing theater, uh, all of that is up in the air and a mess. And I really honestly feel lucky that I have a day job and I don't have to worry so much about work all the time. Like I am a healthcare worker, so I work Monday to Friday and have my weekends off and my weekends were band jam time, but um, that kind of got fucked up. I think, so we played Walker Fest in July, um, but before that, we hadn't played, we haven't played a live gig since February. <laughs> February, holy shit. And you know what's crazy is that if, if I close my eyes and think back, it still feels like February was like two weeks ago. That's weird. Uh, we, I've been saying it for a long time, this pandemic has really fucked up the uh, uh, grasp on time and how much time is flying. Like it's already fucking the end of August. Jesus. So, how have you guys been holding up? Good? Good. Good. Um, so now, I, so I got five of my favorite albums here. Five of my favorite vinyls. You kids listen little vinyl? <laughs> um, so first one, let's see, my first favorite vinyl that I want to show. So I just got it for my birthday slash Christmas. And this was given to me by my stepdad. Hello, Frank. Uh, him and my mom and my sister live in Arizona. And I went to see them. And he gave me this. This is probably the best album. And it's really good. And look at these ladies. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Look at those babes. Look at them. Oh, the glare. God, man, Lita Ford, she's a bitch, but she's got legs for days. Look at that. Holy shit. Yeah, so that's my first one, The Runaways, Live in Japan. Um, the infamous uh, outfit that Cherie Curry wore came out in her lingerie. Um, it's funny, she actually, my dad is Facebook friends with her, and I shared something like an old picture of Cherie with blood on her face. And she wrote back to it and told me it wasn't real blood, it was stage blood. So I was a little disappointed, but we're, we're past that now. It was more exciting that she wrote back to me. Um, next album, Hot Damn Scandal, Strange Tongues. It's a really good album. And we got it for free from Pete, who is the lead singer of Hot Damn Scandal. 
And yeah, this, this album is so good. The cover is awesome. I'm showing it to Instagram first this time. It's so trippy and cool and uh, this is this is old. This is an older album. Oh, this way. Um, they have a new album that came out a couple years ago now. Uh, the Gods Are Made of Mud. And that's also a fantastic album. We had them on on one of our pandemics. Check it out. It uh, should be on the page. But they're hot damn scandal, man. They're, uh, they're badass. Next we got... Oh, this is a good one. Toy Soldiers. Um, so this got given to me by Ron Gallo, who was the lead singer. He's right there. This is him pre-cool uh, hairdo that he has now. And now he's doing his own solo thing, um, working with his wife, and it's so cute. I love them. But I saw Ron Gallo like three, four years ago now, live in Boston uh, at once. And then before that, it was at this like tiny bar. I don't even remember the name. But it was so cool and intimate and like, I came up to him and I wanted to buy some merch, but my car, my van at the time did not have a CD player or a tape player or anything. So he gave me that vinyl <laughs> for free. I get so many things for free. I guess I'm just nice. Um, but he's, Ron Gallo is awesome. The, that album, Toy Soldiers, is great. Um, some really catchy tunes. You can tell, kind of, if you're a Ron Gallo fan, you can tell his songs versus, like, the rest of the songs were written by somebody else. I can, I can tell it. Uh, so next one, The Slackers, Red Light. I feel like a teacher at school. The thing is, does everyone see? So this we bought when we saw the Slackers play in Portsmouth, New Hampshire at 3S Art Space, which we are actually playing there, I'm pretty sure in September. Uh, yeah, maybe. It's on the, it's on our Facebook page, so don't worry about it. Um, this album is so good, and we, I think it was the 10th anniversary of this album coming out. I don't remember exactly, but they were, they were having a big show and playing all these great songs, and it was really fun. I think that was the last time I saw live music, and that was a while ago, too, because I've just been so busy playing my own live music. This is the, the last time I saw live music when I wasn't playing a show. There we go. Last one. Most used, obviously, is Joan. Joan and the Black Arts. This album was just so good. Plus, the cover is just amazing. I love her so much. <sighs> she was just, look at her face. Look at her. For those of you who don't know, I love Joan Jett. She's my inspiration. Boy. I chose the uh, the hot ass fucking plant room to do this live in. Speaking of plants, you guys, look at all the plants. Do you see them all? I'm very proud of these plants. And the most proudest I am is of my friend here. This was about half, not like a quarter of the size of this. So tiny. This little tiny rose bush was dying, left to be forgotten on the Mother's Day clearance rack in the middle of summer. And I said, you know what? I'll make him live. I'll do it. And I did it. And it's gonna bloom soon. See? This live is really taking a turn. I'm just showing my plants now. <laughs> but I'm really proud. So I lost the other, the twin that went with this rose plant. Um, fungal gnats took over it and killed it and ripped it to shreds and turned it into a droopy little old man penis. So I'm really excited for this guy to bloom. Um, so yeah. 
plants, plants, plants everywhere. We've gotten really into plants since our roommate moved out, and we got to turn this whole room into a plant room. And my hoop room. There. <laughs> oh, you can't see it, Instagram, but my hoops are over here. Um. So yeah, should I play another song? Should I show you the the wonders of nature? I'm really um. I'm regretting choosing a whole hour <laughs> to go live because I already want to go in the other room and take my pants off. And I can't do that on, on these platforms because it's inappropriate. Um, <coughs> well, so basically what I've been doing during this pandemic, I'm sure you all were dying to know. I have been going to work and then going home and not doing a damn thing because I don't want to endanger myself, endanger somebody else's life, or um, go out into the world because honestly the world is fucked right now. Even if I'm not worried about corona, I'm honestly like waiting to like see some crazy QAnon guy come out and like shoot up a... Chinese restaurant because they think there are children locked in the basement. It's it's exhausting seeing all this shit. And people are just like, yeah, it's real. Even though I just like watched some guy talking in a car on YouTube for 25 minutes and he's not even a scientist. It's real. <laughs> Hi. We have a special guest. Of course, he has our shirt on. <laughs> What's going on? Hi. We've got like we've got five people watching us right now. I think. No. Nope. Oh, I've only got one question. It's been really exciting. What do you mean? I asked you a question. What was it? What are you mad me? <laughs> you show me your bombs. <laughs> I can't see them on Facebook here. I don't know how to use this. Um, I'm so sorry if somebody's actually asking me things and I can't even see them. No, no you don't have any questions on there. No, that's what I thought. No one cares you're about. Your dad's answering them. Oh, is he? Yeah. That's embarrassing. My dad helped me out. Um. So, oh my gosh, I brought this in here. I thought I'd give a little shout out and a little story. So this is Barb. Can you see her? This is Barb. We got her um, from our good friend Rusty's Resale in Hudson, New Hampshire. Um, Guy's got dope shit. He's got so much stuff. It's crazy the amount of cool shit he has. And he saves the weird stuff specifically for us. And uh, Barb here, we both walked through his like back room picking area one day, one at a time, and we, him and I both saw this picture, and we both wanted to tell, Mike was already, I saw it, and I said, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> we didn't care about the price. We, we just, didn't care. We just said, take, so, take but it. before we even went to grab it, Rusty said, I have the picture for you guys. Took us in the back room. <laughs> And it was Barb! We saw her! It was amazing! But as you can see, she's in um she's in the bathtub at her hotel. Drinking a Diet Coke. It's it, there's a really bad glare. But she's just like living life. So this has been in our bathroom, it's moved around a little bit, but this is our treasured bathroom photo given to us by Rusty at his store, Rusty's Resale. If you are in Hudson, New Hampshire or close to it. You gotta go check it out. Wear your mask, please, because Rusty is a dear friend, and I don't want him to get coronavirus. Somebody wants to know if they make us beans, will we play a show in their yard? Yes. You, there's no question I will do that. There's no question the amount of things we'll, we will do for beans. I probably would do a lot of things for beans. Just, I mean, some things it could just be like, I'll do that. 
and then I'll just have beans after and it's great. Um, but yeah, we would do, if you give us beans, we'll put, we'll, we'll work it out. Even if it's just me and I'll make all the instrument sounds by myself and loop them. That would be terrible, <laughs> but. As long as there's beans involved. As long as there's beans, I'll do, I'll do anything. Um, it's just, beans, man. Beans are so good. Let's see. I'm going to the comments here. Who are you going to play a song? I was thinking about it, but then um, I didn't know what I was going to play. So <laughs> I kind of gave up here. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, so specific bean recipe somebody sent me. Yes, I will. That that recipe looked amazing. Somebody sent you a bean recipe? Yes, it was like noodles and like seven different types of beans and it was in like a chili kind of, it was like... Noodles and beans? Yes, I'm, I'm about that. That's carbs on carbs on carbs. But, uh, would they be better than my beans? I, I don't know, I have to try them. No, you're supposed to say no. Why? Because I'm the best. <laughs> Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find the, uh, the live on Facebook because Instagram is great. It just shows you right, right there. The comments popping up as we're doing the video. But here, oh, look at all this. See, what the hell? I gotta get better on the internet. I'm really bad. I don't want to. Oh, that was my own voice. Um... Oh man, somebody said, I, I hope to see you in Memphis one day. That would be so cool. I'd love to go to Memphis. <laughs> I'm froze. Oh, it froze? <laughs> well, we're frozen on Facebook. It's probably because I have these two tabs open and running. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to like take over and like become the new face of Bitter Pill, please email me at fuckmylife.com at gmail.com. I'm just kidding, that doesn't exist. But it's really, it, so let me just say, as somebody who is poor and lives a very boring life, <laughs> <coughs> why am I the one, is it because I sing? Guys, guess what? Let the banjo player be popular for once. Let's ignore the female front woman for one day and be excited about the banjo player. Look at him. He's got no shirt on. I have a shirt and overalls on. Speaking of my shirt, I got this. Uh, shout out to Scrimmy. Scrimmy! If you don't know about Scrimmy, go look up Scrimmy in the dirt bags. <laughs> Scrimmy does so much for the music scene. Scrimmy and, uh... is a fantastic. <laughs> he books almost all of our shows. Whenever we play in Manchester, we always, if he hits us up, we're there. He's amazing. He plays some sick fucking music. And he hates Weezer. And bongos. And bongos. Fuck Weezer and fuck bongos. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I thought I'd sport this. I'm trying to like give all the people what they want, which is cool, local shit. Um, oh, we should, so somebody said we should get pinups of the banjo player. I'd like that. I have some great costumes that he could wear and it would be, be sexy. A little boudoir. Yeah, ooh, boudoir. <laughs> um, what are we? What are we talking about here? Nothing? Um... Why do you even come in here? <laughs> oh, to smoke weed with you. Oh, that's nice. <coughs> so you guys, it's okay to smoke weed, but it's also okay <coughs> to not <coughs> smoke weed. <coughs> it's also okay to do meth in moderation. <coughs> well... But it's also okay to not do meth. At all. In moderation. At all. <laughs> I don't suggest doing that. Actually, so, here's a story time. <laughs> Me and Michael lived in Arizona 
for a, for a minute, for a, for a small stint. And we lived in a trailer park that was famous for uh, trailers blowing up, either because people are mad or they're making mess and things go wrong. Michael was walking the dog one day and he found a whole bag of mess. It was a lot. It was like <laughs> over a thousand dollars worth of mess. A huge bag. It was probably it was like a big Ziploc like freezer bag. Like imagine two chicken breasts, like decent sized market basket chicken breasts. It was a lot of meth. But it's meth. It, it took Emily <laughs> about a week to convince me to throw it away. Because, he was he was well to they were it. fucking poor and I figured hey you know somebody's gonna get high anyways <laughs> might as well make a few dollars off. <laughs> Turns out, it wasn't meth. It wasn't meth. We uh, called up some local meth heads that we happen to know. Ex-Amish members. Ex-Amish meth heads. And they tested it, and it was not meth. It was... It was also very strange that they just willingly well, put uh, some weird substance that I found on the ground in their mouth. They smoke meth, so you would think that they're, you know... Their logical thinking is probably not great. It's not. Their their brain is probably rotted from doing that. So they're like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was. Bitter pill does not promote the sales or the use of meth. No meth. That's something that we don't do. <laughs> uh. Anyway, meth talk. Shall we? Shall we play something? Do you want to play song? Play song. Let's see. You want to take the guitar? Sure. Do you remember your new song? Um. Yeah. <clears throat> Should I get my ukulele? Probably gotta get tuned. <laughs> That's what um, hanging on the wall will do to you. There it is. <laughs> there it is. I wrote the damn song. I should remember. So the song I wrote for um, all my friends and people I don't know who are protesting right now and all the people who are getting hurt and people who died and all that shit. Right? Yep. Two, three.
kind yeah, of... Yeah, the leaves are always different every time it pops yeah. up, which is really cool. Yeah. It's interesting. Interesting. We've become, like, really crazy... Like, you know, crazy cat ladies? We have turned into, like, crazy plant people. I feel like in the last few months of this pandemic, we've gotten really... Since, since we started our garden, we've been, like, plant insane. Well, yeah, we've, we've had the time for it. Um, yeah. I luckily worked at Lowe's and was getting a lot of free plants. Yeah, filling the back seat with plants every time I'd come pick you up. <laughs> yeah, and take a lunch break just to bring plants on. Actually, bring a plant home and then go back to work. <laughs> but now we have all these beautiful plants. Yeah. And we have vegetables growing. He just he just made some salsa. Been eating good. Eating good for a couple of. Poor people. Um, yeah, just made fresh salsa today. Actually. I can't wait to eat some. It needs to ferment for a couple days. Oh yeah, because we just learned salsa needs to ferment. The more you know. It's fucking crazy. This is the most interesting live that we've probably had <laughs> on this page. Let me just say. Read from a book. I played a horribly sad song. We don't need a band. No. You know, Bitter Pill is now just going to be me smoking a bowl and talking about weird stuff that no one cares about. <laughs> that seven people care about. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you got. You got a couple over here. You got, you got a couple over, over there. there. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. It's all right. It's almost over. It was going really good. I had a momentum. I had shit planned out. Oh, uh, then I showed up. No, I just ran out of stuff to talk about. I had only planned so far into this, and I was like, we'll see what happens. But it's going really good, I think, <laughs> for my first time. <clears throat> so, Mike, you want to you wanna play something? Do I want to play something? Yeah, play something. Oh, uh, I don't know. Something you just learned. Something fun too. Yeah. Here. Well, Mike tunes his guitar. I'll skew it into the frame. <laughs> This guitar was given to me by my grandmother. It was amazing. And without her, our band would definitely not be a thing. Because there's two people that are related to her that are in the band. Think about that for a second. Also, happy birthday to Paula, please. She's my stepmom and she's pretty cool. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I didn't want to sing happy birthday. Uh, happy I don't want to get sued. Paula. I don't want to get sued by the ghost of Michael Jackson. So. Happy birthday, Paula. Happy birthday. Love you. <laughs> um, we were supposed to come over for the last two weekends and we didn't. So that's, I guess we suck. But Sorry. You know what? What can I say? Hey. <laughs> Take it's, it away, Michael. It's a pandemic. Yeah. Take it away. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I have to play a song.
mentioned them at the beginning of this. Um, it's actually, I believe, a traditional folk tune, but, you know, as they say, Doc did it better, so. As, as they, singular they, <laughs> said it. As this guy says. As one, this one human being next to me said it. But it's true. And I agree. I think he's probably our, our favorite collective person <coughs> that we can both listen to and not get sick of when either of us put it on. <coughs> I mean, we, oh, wow, okay, so we got about like 10 minutes left. Um, Somebody said we're entitled to suckage. I'm not quite sure what that I, means. You know, but. I totally <coughs> agree, and here's why. <laughs> suckage. Not to be confused with suffrage. Suffrage. Which is just somebody suffering. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's, that's not what suffrage means. <laughs> this man. Um, I'm not sure exactly what suckage means, but I really would like to know more. And if you want to message me and let me know the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of that word, you let me know. That's interesting. Suckage, like, what does that mean? I mean, vacuums have suckage. So it's like, we deserve vacuums? Because we just got a really nice new vacuum works so well. So we are entitled to suckage. I think. <clears throat> yeah. Fuck suckage. Yeah. Fuck it. Who, who are you? Uh, Susan, Suzanne Dembski? I don't know, but I'd really like to talk with you further. Who are you, Susan Dembski? Susan. Ready? One, two, three. Go. Now play it. to really end this on. So like I said at the beginning of this live, I'm a healthcare worker. I um, go from uh, different people's homes, sometimes a nursing home, uh, and give them basic care like a shower or uh, <laughs> doing the back of track. Yeah, so I give them a shower, get them dressed, or help them with breakfast, whatever. Some people need more care than others. But the way I started before I became an HHA, was I was just doing housekeeping. So I'd go over to retired people's homes and clean them and go shopping for them and stupid shit like make their bed and do their laundry, you know, easy stuff. So I had this one woman and her name was Suzanne. And Suzanne lived in the basement apartment of this kind of creepy brick building in Lexington, Massachusetts. Historic town, by the way. So Suzanne was a total hypochondriac and had terrible OCD. Uh, she used to mop her floor with ammon straight ammonia barefoot and kind of, you know, sprinkle it on her feet if she'd been out that day because her feet get dirty, even through shoes and socks. Um, so one day, Suzanne, she got a surgery on her foot. <clears throat> she couldn't take a shower because uh, she couldn't get her foot wet. She couldn't get the cast wet and everything. So she asked me if I could wash her hair for her. I said, sure, Suzanne. 
I'll go. I'll wash your hair. Like I got. Get, I'll set it up in the kitchen. Get the sink running. Nice warm water. Got the shampoo, conditioner, and then like hair mask for afterwards. And uh, she's like, "Hold on, I'm gonna go get ready. I'll be right back." She's gone for like maybe 15 minutes. I'm sitting there waiting, preparing to wash this old lady's hair. And uh, in walks Suzanne, her hair down. I've never seen her hair down. It's always really tight up in a clip. Her hair down and completely naked, <laughs> except for a trash bag from her foot up to like right here on her thigh, taped up, scotch tape. Mind you, her windows are all open and the sidewalk is level to her kitchen apartment. <laughs> so there I was and I covered her with a towel this way and this way and then I washed Suzanne's hair. And uh, actually ever since then, the moral to the story is, uh, you know, you get old and things get a little hey, but it's no reason to be freaked out because now I'm so used to it. I, I've had clients just like, you know, answer the door and they're naked and it's like, hey guys, what's going on? Because it's, you know, they expect me to give them a shower when I get there, so they're, they're ready. Thank you, Suzanne, wherever you are, probably washing your hands with ammonia. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. taking care of old people. You know, I think that would actually go over really well. So, Amanda Plord Duquette blesses you, blesses your heart for what you do. Oh. Help people remain in their homes. I do, and you know what? It's a fantastic job. I love it so much. Uh, I actually just had to say goodbye to a bunch of clients this past week because I'm starting with uh, respite care, which is... You just kind of take care of somebody until they pass away, to put it nicely. Uh, but she loves me, and she's fantastic, and I can't wait to be goofing off with her for eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. It's going to be amazing. Yup. So, I think that's, um... Get that full-time shit. Yeah. I'm going to work, be working my ass off, and it's going to be sweet. But not really working my ass off, because all she wants to do is talk to me and watch Ellen and Judge Judy. Shout out to Ellen. I hope you're not mean, like they're saying you are. Yeah, I really want to like not believe that Ellen's a douchebag, but... Yeah, well, there's a lot of people coming out and saying some shit about her. I feel like she can't. She's white Oprah. <laughs> she can't. She's white lesbian Oprah. Well, I mean, her sexuality has nothing to do with it. She's... Well, Oprah's... Doesn't she have a husband? <clears throat> is Oprah married? Yeah, he's got a stupid name, like Cedric or something like that. <laughs> I <laughs> Do you guys know Oprah's husband's name? Who is Oprah's husband? If you know, please send the band page a DM with the information that I need. Because I don't want to Google it myself. <laughs> Hi, Matthew Gordon. He says he's from Philly. Hello, Matthew Gordon from Philly. Hey, Hey, Matthew. Thank you for being like... So, uh, I think I'm going to close it here. So, thanks for watching. Specific shout out to Matthew, what is it? Gordon. Matthew Gordon. I know a kid. His name was Gordon. Uh, I met him in uh, high school. He was a really cool kid. He was really smart. So, I bet you're smart too. Um, but thank you guys for watching. If you know about Oprah's husband or the definition of suckage, please private message us. Or even comment here with the link. 
to the necessary facts and figures that I need. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining me on this really weird live. This is pretty much what we would be doing if we were just sitting here not live. people watching now and it's like makes you feel a little uncomfortable but also like cool because someone's like we're gonna watch you for an hour that's crazy so thank you and uh i hope you guys Stedman. <laughs> john mccormick came in Stedman. Stedman. That's oh, Oprah's Oprah's husband. Husband's name is Stedman. Stedman and that's that's where we'll leave it all right Stedman. not a husband but a partner Stedman winfrey have a good night Ha <laughs>